Hi, 10th graders. Hope you had a great weekend. Again, my name is Mr. Benson. I'm excited to be your virtual teacher for yet another week. Welcome to week six, lesson 25. Let's get started. But first, the joke of the day. What do you call a pig that does karate? A pork chop. <laughs> so for today's lesson, the video you should be watching right now is ELA G10 W6 L25. The text we're going to read this week is called The Thrill of the Chase, and today's main objective is to write a summary. And then once you get down to the lesson itself, just remind yourself of what materials you need for today. The learning target for today is I can complete first read annotations to help with comprehension and future analysis of the text. Just like the first lesson of every other week has been, um, you all will engage in a first read today to make sense of the text The Thrill of the Chase, to get a gist that you can engage in future analysis of the text throughout the week. Let's go over the lesson today and the read, think, talk, write protocol. For the read part today, some background information. The article chronicles the controversies surrounding a modern day hunt for a real life buried treasure. The article describes what was expected to be the final adventure of Forrest Fenn and art collector and treasure hunter. And your job is with this text, um, about this controversial modern day treasure hunt. You're going to perform the steps of the first read independently, which is the notice, annotate, connect, and respond using the first read guide fiction. And then for the think section today, um, as you read the text for the first time, you're going to notice the tone of the feature and pay attention to the way the author presents the information. As you read, pause and make connections with stories you've read or heard movies and TV shows or with your own personal experience. And you're gonna document this insight um, in the connect section on your first read guide nonfiction, which as you all are familiar with already, the first read guide um, has a connect section. So you'll actually um, jot your response on the connect section of the first read guide. Now for the talk part today, you're going to talk with someone about the following question. How much time and effort would you put into finding a treasure? Would you find a treasure hunt thrilling or frustrating? This is just a personal opinion question. So how much time would you put into finding a treasure? And would you find it thrilling or frustrating? Um, and you'll see how the people that are, are discussed in our story today, how they felt about the treasure hunt. And then you're going to obviously capture your response in the note catcher. And then the right section today. So on the space provided on your note catcher, confirm your understanding by writing a summary of the text. So your end product today is a summary of the text. And just a reminder, all of this um, can be found on your note catcher. And anytime it asks you for a response to something, um, it should be jotted down on your note catcher and not um, some other piece of paper. So the closing today is like the closing every other day. You're first going to share your writing with someone. And then after you complete your assignment, remember to read a book for 20 minutes. And if you go to the top of the ELA packet, there is a reading log for you to document the reading you do every single day. So the quick model today is around identifying tone in the first read. And if you go back to the lesson plan, you'll remember that uh, in the read part, you have to actually engage in the first read routine and complete the first read guide. We're going to notice, annotate, connect, and respond like you normally do. But then when you come down to the think section, it reminds you of an additional component of um, the lesson for today, which is as you're reading and engaging in the first read, you should notice the tone of the feature and pay attention to the way the author presents the information. So that's your main goal for while you're reading um, the text and engaging in the first read. So before I model with you a few paragraphs in our text and how to find the tone in those paragraphs, I wanted to quickly just show you a graphic that does a good job of explaining the difference between tone versus mood because sometimes students and even teachers can get confused by the two. Um, so this graphic is something I found online, but you can find a million other graphics that maybe look different and use different words, but um, for the most part, we'll get to the same understanding here of what the main difference is between tone versus mood. So tone is described in the left-hand side uh, with the brown background and mood is described in the right-hand side with the green background. So let's start with tone. Tone is the attitude of the author towards a subject. And then mood. Mood is the atmosphere or the emotional setting created by a piece of literary work. So um, 
even though this may seem very similar, and they actually are very similar, there's, there's one main difference between tone and mood, and they said it here. So tone is attitude of the author towards the subject. So authors obviously have different opinions about what they're writing about, even through characterization, they obviously want us to, to feel certain things of, you know, about certain characters, but they also have attitude. If it's a, if it's a nonfiction piece, they may have attitudes or opinions about the nonfiction piece they're writing about or the topic of the nonfiction piece. Um, whereas mood is like the atmosphere, emotional setting created by the, the piece itself. So tone is essentially like what the author's attitude is towards something. And mood is like how you feel as a reader because of that tone. So typically, sometimes they're aligned. Like if the tone of something is meant to be dark and the mood, like how you feel, would probably be similar to that. You would probably feel like scared or, or, or creep, creeped out. So tone and mood are connected, but tone is really more the author and what the author's attitude is towards the subject. And mood is like how you feel because of that tone that the author set. Then at the bottom, it says tone is mainly created by diction and detail and mood is created by setting imagery and diction. This is not a perfect science, but for the most part, um, and we'll see today, tone is really set by um, diction and detail, specifically diction today, because authors use words and diction to word choice to really get their message across. And you can tell a lot about um, the attitude the author has towards something based on the words they use. And then mood definitely can be set by diction, because again, like the words that the author uses um, is going to create a certain mood and, and feeling with the reader but also by setting an imagery. So um, you'll see that like, you know, that the setting that, that is used in a, in a specific text can definitely impact the way uh, we read it and, and how we feel when we're reading it. And um, these are some tone words that I found online. I just wanted to lift them here and, and project them only because I think it's important to just sort of like go through a few to give you an idea of like what tone actually is. Um, there are, hundreds, millions, actually, of other words you could use. Millions is maybe a stretch, but thousands of other words you could use to describe tone of any text. Here are just some that I found um, right offline. So afraid, an author could be using an afraid tone. They could be using a childish tone. They could be using an irrelevant tone, a silly tone, a shocking tone, a pitiful tone, a detached tone. These are all just you know examples of words that you've heard before, but um, are intentional or words to describe like how an author would essentially describe their attitude towards something. So I'll have this um, tone word list up um, when we go through the actual model in a second. Um, but I just wanted to show you that these are examples of like tone words that are often used when describing the tone of a text. Okay, so for the model today, I'm going to leave the tone words up. And I'm actually only gonna model the first three paragraphs with you. I'm gonna help you um, sort of like identify the tone of the first three paragraphs. Um, Cause I want you all to be able to do this you know, on your own as you continue to read um, the text and engage in the first read. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to read a paragraph with you. I'm also going to um, sort of highlight the main points of that paragraph and, and write notes in the margins, which I recommend that you do as well. You obviously have your first read guide to complete, but I think it's also valuable to sort of jot down some notes in the margins um, on the text itself as you're reading. And then after we go through the text, um, I'll list off three tone words that I pulled out so far to describe the tone of the text. I think it's important to also note here that while the tone may be this after the first three paragraphs, um, you'll see when you keep reading the tone shifts, but just in general, um, text oftentimes, authors to oftentimes in text use um, a variety of, of words to describe different tones and because things change throughout a text. And so it's important not to just think that the, the, the tone of the entire piece is what the tone is after these first three paragraphs. And, and you'll see what I mean when you keep reading. Okay, so let's start with paragraph one. Blame Ralph Lauren. In 1996, the designer paid a visit to his friend Forrest Fenn who lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Fenn had recently undergone chemo and radiation for kidney cancer and was told there was only a 20% chance for his survival. He sold a successful Santa Fe art gallery and settled in to await the inevitable. While he did, many friends stopped by to visit him and his wife at home. Okay, so the main points of this paragraph, Loren visits Fenn, who is an art collector dying of cancer. So Ralph Loren and Forrest Fenn are friends. Ralph Loren comes to visit and we learn that um, Forrest Fenn, who is 
you know, has had a successful art gallery is um, dying of cancer. And he has a 20% 20, 20 chance of survival, which is why Ralph Lauren came to visit as well as other friends and family. Let's keep reading. The place was filled with more than 5,000 pieces of museum quality Southwestern art and artifacts from Sitting Bull's pipe and an 18th century painted buffalo skin to early Indian pottery and rare Plains Indian medicine bonnets. Loren immediately fell in love with a Crow Indian hat cover, covered in white ermine skins and carved antelope horns and offered to buy it. Fenn refused, saying it was one of his favorites. Loren said, well, you can't take it with you, to which Fenn replied, then I'm not going. Obviously, that was a funny little banter back and forth between um, Loren and Fenn. So main points here, Fenn has collected thousands of rare artifacts and, and refused to sell them, even to his friend Ralph Loren. So maybe he may sell other artifacts, but this one particular artifact, um, the Indian hat that um, Loren wanted, like Fenn refused to sell it. Yeah, he said he's not going anywhere, meaning like I'm not dying then if you know if you if you want it, I'm not letting you have it and I'm not dying, then you may think I'm not taking I can't take it with me to the grave, so then I'm not dying. So that just speaks to obviously their their relationship and their funny banter, but also it speaks to how how much um, Fenn appreciates and, and loves and cares for some of these artifacts. They're, they're really important to him. Um, clearly, this is his, his life work. Okay, let's keep reading. Though the hat remained safely ensconced in Fenn's collection, Loren's visit gave the ailing art collector an idea. Inspired by the adventure stories he had devoured as a child, Fenn sat down to write a memoir, jotting down scenes and remembrances as they came to him. As an Air Force pilot during the Vietnam War, he flew 328 missions and was shot down twice. Okay, so main points here. Loren inspired Fenn to write a memoir chronicling, chronicling his life story around the art he collected. So um, actually, like, you know, Loren's visit was because he's a good friend to Fenn, but actually more came of it. Um, so Loren inspired Fenn to write a memoir about his life, to chronicle all the uh, a story around all the art that he's collected throughout his life. And I imagine there's like really good stories behind the rare you know, pieces of artifacts that he has collected. So um, Loren actually inspired Fenn to write a memoir and, and chronicle all these stories um, from, from his life and his life work. So that's pretty cool actually. So um, I'm going to then I'm going to now list off like three tone words that I that I am you know pulling out to describe the tone so far of the text. Again, you can have a different interpretation, and some of my words you'll see on this list here, but some of my tone words are not on this list, and that's totally fine as well. So you don't have to just use the words listed here, um, but if you are struggling to to find words, you can definitely use the ones listed here. There's a there's quite a variety, but you don't have to. So the first word that I pulled out is sarcastic. So not only are they sarcastic with each other and they joke around and have funny banter like Ralph Lauren and Forrest Fenn, they have a, a silly um, relationship and they, they joke, they're very jovial. Um, I chose the word sarcastic because the first word that's used in this text by our author, she uses the word blame. She says, blame Ralph Lauren. And immediately we're, we're thinking that like Ralph Lauren did something wrong, right? That he potentially wronged Forrest Fenn. Um, but like when we keep reading, um, you see that like the blame is a sarcastic blame because Ralph Lauren inspired actually um, Fenn to write his memoir and then inspired other things that you'll see when you keep reading. But in this part here, he inspired him to write his memoir. So like blame is actually used as a sarcastic in a sarcastic way here. I like, got oh, blame blame him. You know he's the one that started this whole thing of the memoir. Not 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 a negative blame. More of like you know. I'm going to be sarcastic. The author was being sarcastic about uh, blame because it, it, you know, it is, it is Loren's fault. But fault's the wrong word to use because there's no, there's actually no harm in what he encouraged him to do. He's, he's going to now, um, Fenn's now going to write a memoir, which is actually pretty, pretty, pretty powerful, pretty amazing. The next word is astonished, and so I think like when, um, when we when we learn some of the details about all the pieces of um, rare art that Fenn has collected, there's some like there's an, a sense of astonishment. Um, all the detail that's used to describe all the artifacts, it could have you know the author could have easily just said um, buffalo skin, but um, the author's describing the time period it was painted in and uh, calling using words like rare. 
um, and then like immediate fell in, um, Loren immediately fell in love with something. Um, the author could have said Loren, you know, liked or appreciated something, but fell in love with suggests that um, Ben actually has artwork that's that's really like yeah one of a kind. And so I'm sensing a, a, um, a tone of astonishment that the author sort of like suggesting that um, all of this is just astonishing. It's amazing that this man over his life was able to collect such rare arts that some people um, never get a chance to see, but most people don't get a chance to collect, that's for sure. And then appreciative. This sort of goes hand in hand with astonished, but um, I think there's like an appreciative tone that like, it, it takes a lot of um, like focus and energy and time to be able to collect such beauty and to keep it preserved and, and maintain its original beauty. And so I, uh, I think that some of the words that are used throughout and just, again, the detail used to describe um, all of these pieces of rare artwork um, suggest a, an appreciative tone. The author is very appreciative of all the, the hard work and dedication that Ben has put into keeping this art gallery so pristine and so um, world world class. Um, and so I think like overall, while it started off with a sarcastic tone, you see throughout that like the tone is intentionally one of like astonishment and um, amazement and appreciation just to show how um, impressive Ben's art collection is. So before I preview the learning for tomorrow, I just wanted to remind you that you have way more to do after uh, watching my model. So don't forget to read the rest of the text, engage in the first read routine, write notes in the margins, continue to identify the tome, and then also complete the rest of the uh, of the read, think, talk, write protocol. And ultimately your end goal in the writing section is to write a summary of the text. Now tomorrow is lesson 26 and the learning target is I can complete close read annotations to analyze how the use of anecdotes enhance the intended message of a text. Of course, our texts will stay the same. You're going to be reading the same text tomorrow, um, and you're going to engage in a close read because you would have already finished your first read, which is what you're doing today. And we're going to really focus in on um, the use of anecdotes and how it enhance the intended message of the text. As always, thank you for learning with me today. Just a few quick reminders. Don't forget to talk about your lesson with someone. Read 20 minutes and complete a reading log entry. The reading log is at the front of your packet and practice reading fluency using the first or second page of your weekly reading. So the reading for this week can be used for your fluency work. And if you forgot what to do for fluency, go to the front of your packet and there's information there. And as always, email your teacher for support if you have any questions. Thank you, have a great day. And remember, keep learning.